Well, hi friends. Good morning to you. It's Papa Dale from Lake Havasu City. And we are enjoying a beautiful Havasu morning here. The sun is bright and shiny. And well, hello, Bandit. Hi, Papa. I, I just need a hug and, and I want some love. And, and can, can, you, can you please just pay some attention to me? Yeah, I can. Uh, as soon as I'm done making this video, uh, you and I will play, and we will do something fun, okay? Yeah, we will. <laughs> uh, I've had a little bit of a problem that uh, I'm told by uh, RV repair people is a very common problem. It is a problem with my furnace. Sometimes it'll click on, sometimes it won't. And I've identified what the problem is. Well... They've told me that if I'm out in boondocking somewhere, that uh, if I turn the furnace on and then go outside and give the side the furnace cover on the outside uh, a good hard whack or two, that it'll come back on. But they never told me why that was so. Well, I've done some research and I found out that the reason for that is usually uh, a sticky sail switch. The way the furnaces work, the fan comes on and it's on for about 15 seconds and exhausts any possible lingering fumes from its last use. And then the switch is designed so that it catches the wind that's generated by the, uh, by the fan, the furnace fan, and that wind moves the switch and turns the gas on. And so you can hear the gas ignite. Well, that's all well and good, but if that switch is uh, hindered by uh, dog hair or cat hair or dirt or if it's defective, then uh, it's not going to work. And uh, if, it's, uh, if it's defective, it won't work at all. But if it just is hindered, then sometimes it'll work and sometimes it won't. So that's been my experience for some time with it now. So I'm going to I'm going to go out and see if I can't clean that sail switch off <laughs> and get more stable consistent use out of my furnace. Well, I turned my generator on this morning to uh, get a little power uh go on the batteries always kind of run down a little bit at night. But uh generator is pumping out a lot of noise right there where I'm going to be working on that furnace and I want to be able to show you guys what I'm doing, so I got to come in here and turn it off. Just like that. Now, how am I going to get power? Well, you see, I've got this remote here that goes up to power actuators on my solar panels on my roof. Listen to this. Push the button. You hear that? That is my solar panels going up to an angle to be able to catch more direct sun rays. <laughs> and here's what it looks like from the outside as these panels are getting raised. See that coming up there? Isn't that nice? Ah, oh, I like it. That's one of my favorite custom features that I've had added to my RV. <laughs> so now we're going to go up here and we're going to take this furnace cover off. Now usually there's two covers pretty close to one another. The, the bigger square one is for the, uh, um, what is that for? I don't remember what that's for. This lower one is uh, for the furnace down here. Oh, I remember. It's the water heater. Very simple operation. Just a matter of taking off uh, one, two, three, four screws and uh, that cover pops off we'll show you what it looks like inside just pop that cover off there and uh, 
Put it down upside down on the ground. Makes a nice safe place to put your screws so you don't lose them. But there is the uh, workings of the furnace in there. So See the white label that's on the fan motor cover. And on the upper left and right and lower left and right, there are single screws that uh, are easily accessed. And uh, you loosen those up and you take them off. And then that, uh, that motor cover uh, will come off. In that process uh, of uh, getting that cover off, you also have to release uh, some of the electrical connections. Uh, if you've never done this before, it looks real complicated. It's not. Don't worry about it. Uh, you won't mess it up. Uh, it's very simple, uh, just uh, four wires on mine, uh, just pull off of clips and hang down and then that um, fan motor won't come completely out, but at least it comes out enough that you can get to that sail switch. Deep inside here, we've got a screw in there, there's four of them. One, two, three, four of them. And uh, you get those off and then this shroud loosens and comes off. Now underneath that shroud is a, a rectangular plastic um, piece of uh, piece. Uh, looks a little bit like these rectangular plastic pieces here. Just uh, plain black rectangular pieces. And it screws onto the face of the uh, of the fan motor there. Loosen one or two screws, and that'll loosen up. And once that loosens up, then that that sail switch just comes out, and you'll see a, a, a fairly large piece of aluminum that uh, is uh, flat and long and catches the wind generated by the uh, fan motor. And, uh, and it, it forms a, a sail, and that sail flips that switch. That's why they call it a sail switch. Now, I've already done the repair, but uh, I noticed that uh, when I got in there that the plastic shroud that funnels the air into the fan was loose, and uh, actually it was half off. The end result was that the proper amount of air was not being funneled into that fan motor. So uh, that was probably my problem because when I got in and looked at the sail switch it was all nice and clean and was working fine. So uh, I replaced that shroud, the, I replaced the shroud, put it back in position and uh, uh, then uh, thought well I'm looking good there and uh, tightened everything back up, put it all back together and went inside and Lo and behold, still didn't work. <laughs> oh no, I was disappointed. <laughs> well, my furnace wasn't working after all of that. And so I got to thinking, you know, I wonder if I'm out of gas, but I, I thought that I just filled up with gas here recently. So uh, I come outside here to kind of look and see. If I, if I ran out of propane. So let's take a look. Oh, we got to move this chair out of the way. And we got to access that door right there. Um, another little custom feature that I like a lot is I had these extra custom clips put on and uh, they hold that. So they not only uh, hold that door very very firmly but they also hold it up really high so uh, I don't have to get down on my hands and knees to access any of the panels underneath. So there is my propane tank 14 gallon and here is what the Gage says, it says that it is more than three quarters full, which means that it's actually about as full as it goes. 
because you can't fill these things up 100%. They got to have some got to have some space in there. So it's kind of a mystery. The the furnace is, seems to be working just fine. I seem to have enough propane that that furnace should be functioning just fine. Huh. No, it couldn't be. I couldn't have been that stupid. No. Well, we better check. I wonder if when I filled it up the last time, I forgot to turn the valve back on so that the gas would actually flow. So let's see. The arrow says turning it to the right is closed. Uh-oh. And that seems to be pretty tight and turning it to the left is open and that means that my valve was shut off <laughs> all right here we are moment of truth gonna turn the thermostat up so that it will kick on. We're going to turn the heat switch. Let's see what happens. Are you listening? Oh, there goes the fan. Did you hear that? Air intake. You hear that fan? Fan's working fine. There's the register. Oh, nice warm air coming out. Woohoo! Only one thing I can say. Yabba dabba do! <laughs> Just out for the evening stroll. Bandit is sticking his nose in bushes and lizard holes trying to find something to chase he almost chased a cat didn't you bandit yeah papa if you hadn't have called me off i'd have got that cat too come on come Well, I've walked out pretty much to the end of the road of the Arizona Trust land here. And out here in this far end, you've got a really nice view of the Colorado River. And uh, more of a high up view of the desert. Across the way there where the homes are, that's called Desert Hills. It's an uh, unincorporated community part of the Lake Havasu community. But you can see way out there the Mojave Mountains and the beginning of the business section and the airport over there. That's um, that area over there is uh, Walmart and uh, little white specks down in front of it. That's uh, the camping area where most of the campers are that's where I am kind of on the uh, part to the far right closer to the the um, desert area the empty area but uh, this is gorgeous looking out here at the Mojave Mountains again you see uh, you see some other beautiful mountains and you see another uh, neighborhood out here well this is the road that goes out the Arizona trust land and uh, there's a gate down there that we just uh, got to 
I don't know if that ends the trust land or not. I didn't see any signs. But uh, you can sure see the Colorado River in the distance. Be a beautiful place to set up camp. Except I don't think I could get my big old Class C too far down this road and up that hill. <laughs>